And today I wanted to detail for you just how niacin fights the accumulation of fat in the liver. But before we get started, let me clarify something for you right now because I know it's invariably going to come up. Original flushing niacin, also known as nicotinic acid, is not in any way harmful to the liver. Whenever you hear from anyone that niacin is toxic and or otherwise damaging to the liver, the form of niacin they're referring to is the extended release or time release niacin, not the original flushing form. And while time release niacin may have been formulated to provide people with a more comfortable alternative to original flushing niacin, the time release form has also been used, unfortunately, as a type of scapegoat intended to discredit and dissuade people from using all niacin. So once again, regular original flushing niacin, also known as nicotinic acid, is not harmful to the liver. Now that you understand that, we can proceed. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is a condition where fat accumulates excessively in the liver and it's driven primarily by overconsumption of sugar and refined carbs, a diet and largely sedentary lifestyle that's known dubiously as the standard American diet, or very appropriately, the SAD diet. And it's not just an American problem, as rates of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease are rising all over the world. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is closely associated with all the classic components of metabolic syndrome, those being primarily obesity, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, high triglycerides, elevated LDL cholesterol, and of course, inflammation. So obviously, limiting or even outright avoiding sugar and especially high fructose corn syrup is one of the best ways to avoid this disastrous condition. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is distinguished by an abnormally large amount of fat in our liver cells. De novo lipogenesis is the metabolic process by which carbohydrates from the blood are converted into fatty acids, which are then used to form either triglycerides or lipid molecules. And while it happens both in the liver and existing fat tissue, the liver's de novo lipogenesis is much more active. And it's important to note here that de novo lipogenesis is stimulated by primarily a high carbohydrate and refined sugar diet. The fatty acids created by de novo lipogenesis are then shaped into VLDL particles and are secreted by the liver. In the presence of high insulin, which as you know is the pancreatic response to high dietary intake of glucose, lipogenesis, the metabolic formation of fat, easily overpowers lipolysis, which is when triglycerides are broken down into free fatty acids. So as insulin dramatically slows lipolysis, it also induces lipogenesis and in the liver, this leads to an excessive accumulation of triglycerides. The primary receptor for niacin is known as GPR-109A, and this is also the receptor for the short-chain fatty acid butyrate, and it's through activating this receptor that niacin is able to successfully inhibit de novo lipogenesis, along with fat accumulation and overall liver inflammation. And this even extends to diet-induced non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and as you can imagine, this also translates to a large reduction in liver weight. Inflammation, as is so often the case, is the primary factor involved in the progression of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Fat accumulation in the liver cells instigates the release of a host of pro-inflammatory cytokines like tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-6, and interleukin-1-beta. And all of these cytokines steadily march non-alcoholic fatty liver disease towards fibrosis, cirrhosis, and chronic liver disease. Niacin is well known for inhibiting the release of several of these same cytokines. Niacin's inhibition of tumor necrosis factor alpha in particular is very significant because tumor necrosis factor alpha exerts a strong influence on the stimulation of liver fat accumulation and the synthesis of liver triglycerides. Tumor necrosis factor alpha also inhibits the expression of adenosine receptors that are present on the surface of adipocytes. This way, the anti-lipolytic effect of adenosine is suppressed, which leads to more free fat acids being released from adipocytes and later increased synthesis of triglycerides in the liver. So tumor necrosis factor alpha's activation and promotion of liver lipogenesis is critical for the development of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And again, original flushing niacin significantly diminishes expression of tumor necrosis factor alpha. 
Niacin also diminishes the activity of the liver enzyme diacylglycerol acetyltransferase 2, or DGAT2, which is also responsible for triglyceride synthesis. This is one of the main ways that niacin combats triglycerides so successfully. Niacin, particularly in high doses, can induce both insulin resistance and high blood sugar. So this is one reason why I've always advised you to start low and slow with niacin. And if you are gradually working your way up to larger daily doses, then you absolutely need to incorporate some daily exercise into your regimen, as exercise is the best way to burn off excess glucose and maintain insulin sensitivity. Again, all of these effects happen only with the original flushing form of niacin, known as nicotinic acid. The best way to avoid non-alcoholics fatty liver disease is obviously to not partake in the numerous poisons that induce this dietary disaster. So do what you can to ditch processed and fast food, stay active, start low and slow with niacin, and most of all, don't fear original flushing niacin, because it helps far more than it hurts. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzymental. Stay healthy.